What image comes to mind when you think about violence against women? Have you ever wondered why we talk about violence against women and not against men or against human beings in general? Why do we have a global campaign talking about violence against women? Well, if you're somebody who's searching for answers to such questions, then this video is for you. So keep watching. Hi guys, welcome back. If you're here for the first time, my name is Amra. I create similar content every week, so make sure to subscribe. Before I start discussing why we talk only about violence against women and not men, let me first go over the official definition of violence against women. This is paragraph 112 from the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. So it says violence against women both violates and impairs or nullifies the enjoyment by women in their human rights and fundamental freedoms. In all societies, to a greater or lesser degree, women and girls are subjected to physical, sexual and psychological abuse that cuts across lines of income, class and culture. Now let's look at a list of what is included under violence against women. Acid attacks, domestic violence, intimate partner violence, dowry violence, forced marriages and forced early marriages, rape, sexual abuse, harassment, sexual harassment, honor crimes, incest, psychological emotional abuse, femicide, female infanticide, stove burning, sexual violence, restrictions on social mobility, vanni, karokari, denial of inheritance, economic abuse, social insecurity, female genital mutilation, forced prostitution, trafficking, homicide, elder widow abuse, sex selective abortion. Some of the items on this list are specific to Pakistan, but others are a global problem. Now let's talk about why violence against women and not men. Let me just start by saying that I think that sometimes people like me who are trying to advocate women's rights or who are talking about issues, trying to make people aware of issues like violence against women and harassment, we can sometimes become a bit aggressive in our approach because of our desperation to get uh, things to change. Behavioral change is the most difficult of all changes, I think, to um, bring about. And because it's so difficult, I think that people can sometimes become aggressive. Not all men are violent and not all women are innocent and women can also be violent towards women and men. It's not like we have this wall and, you know, men are on one side of the wall and they are all evil and violent and then there are all the innocent women on the other side of the wall and you know the men are just going to go out and be violent towards the women it's not like that i mean there are obviously there's a certain percentage of um, men who are violent and they are violent towards not only women but they are violent in general but what happens is that you know women are not as physically strong as men and if a man attacks a woman it's harder for her to defend herself um, because of her physical weakness we need to have policies and laws and structures in place so that women can feel secure and women can be protected by the law they can feel like they are productive citizens who are equally participating in the economic growth of their countries. Violence can have a very bad effect on people and it has been known to have very dire consequences on women's mental health and their sense of security, their happiness, their education, the opportunities that come by in their lives and their general well-being. Violence takes place due to gender inequality, where women are made to feel like they are, they have a subordinate status. I know that there are people who feel that uh, 
that these are not our problems. These problems don't exist in our country and we don't need to worry about them. But I think it's really time that everybody just opens their eyes to what's happening. Maybe you don't have any violence in your life, which is really good, good for you. But that doesn't mean that other people are not suffering in patriarchal societies like ours. Women do have subordinate status and they do have to often fight for their rights. The rights that the constitution gives them, the rights that laws in the country give them, that God has given them, but those rights have been taken away from them. And it's important to understand that if those rights are given back to those women, if we actually let women do what they were supposed to do, nobody's doing anybody a favor here. You're just returning something that you have usurped. There are traditional harmful practices, tribal laws and patriarchal attitudes that often discriminate against women. And then there are jirgas and panchayats at the local level who punish women for crimes they have not committed, for crimes that somebody in their family may have committed and they are given away or they are raped or they are killed. These things need to stop. If you can't actually change laws, if you can't actually make laws, at least make a noise. Make a noise and let people know how you feel. Those people you elect know that we want you to make these laws. This is all I'm going to say today about this issue. And I'm going to leave you guys with a question. I would love for you to leave your answers for me in the comment section below. The question is, what do you think the government should do to counter violence against women. If you enjoyed this video or learned something from it, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.